Did you hear it, pagans? A group of scholars quote the same hadith we quote, same Bukhari we quote, same ayah, 6.115, saying no one can change Allah's words. And since the Torah is Allah's word, cannot be changed, but that's true of the gospel and Zabur. Al-Razi also agrees with his, his opinion in his commentary. He said, there is a difference of opinions regarding this matter among some of the respectable scholars. Some of these scholars said the manuscript copies of the Torah were distributed everywhere, and no one knows the exact number of these copies except Allah. Watch. It is impossible to have a conspiracy to change or alter the word of God in all of these copies without missing any copy. Such a conspiracy will not be logical or possible. Now pause right there before we finish it. Razi is saying, that's how God preserved the readings of the Bible. Mass distri distribution and copying of the biblical books spread all over the then known world, made it impossible for the Bible to be corrupted mm -hmm. so that the original is not preserved and it's not found in the extent manuscript tradition. Yeah. So that's Razi. That's why he says the Torah can't be corrupt. Now finish it. Finish yep. Razi. All right, here we go. All right, such a conspiracy will not be logical or possible. All right. <laughs> and when Allah told his messenger to ask the Jews to bring their Torah and read it concerning the stoning command, they were not able to change this command from their copies. <gasps> that is why, which is the hadith that I brought up in the in the debate, by the way. And he's using that as proof that Torah can't be changed. Exactly. That is why they covered up the stoning verse, verse while they were reading it to the prophet. It was then when Abdullah ibn Salam requested that they remove their hand so that the verse became clear. If they have changed or altered the Torah, then this verse would have been one of the important verses to be altered by the Jews. You see what Razi just said to these pagans? It sounds like he's using his brain, man. And he sounds like he's arguing like you. Yes. Now notice the other paragraph. Also, whenever the prophet would ask them, the Jews, concerning the prophecies about him in the Torah, they were not able to remove them either. <gasps> and they would respond by stating that they are not about him and they are still waiting for the prophet in the Torah. Do you understand the logic of Razi? He used yeah. three lines of arguments. Number yeah. one, the Torah, and by extension, the books of the Bible, They've been mass copied, spread all over the world, humanly impossible to get access to them to change them. Mm -hmm. So this is how we know the corruption, where we no longer have the original, that argument won't be sustained. Secondly, the very verse of stoning that was in the copies of the Torah at the time of Muhammad, which John Fontaine tried to say, say no, it wasn't the same. Remember he tried to use that argument? Yeah. It was different. He says, they weren't able to remove it. It was in their copies. If they're going to change anything, they would remove that verse, but they didn't. And mm -hmm. thirdly, the prophecies of Muhammad are still there. If anything, if they're going to remove stuff, those prophecies would be removed. Yeah. So these three lines of argument saying, see, the Torah could not be corrupt, you pagans. Yeah. But it gets worse because now they're going to quote another hadith that you and I and everyone else quote, mm -hmm. the hadith of Abu Dawood. You mean to tell me that they use this for their proof? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, All right. Abu Dawood narrated his collection that Ibn Umar said. So wait, just to be clear, is this Al-Razi still? No, he's oh, now okay. mentioning Ib now, Ibn Qayyim just gave you Razi. Now yeah. he's saying. And also this hadith from Abu Dawud. And then he's going to say what the scholar said about that. Hadith. Oh, so Ibn Kayyim is quoting this hadith. Yes. yes. Nice. Nice. Okay. So Abu Dawud narrated that Ibn Omar said a group of Jews, people, uh, uh, Jewish people visited the messenger. Yada, yada, yada. You guys know the story. I'm going to skip to the uh, relevant part. It says, yes. <clears throat> then the messenger of Allah proceeded to say, bring me the Torah. When they brought it, he removed the pillow from underneath him and placed the Torah on it and said, I believe in you and the one who revealed you. Then said, bring me one who among you who has the most knowledge. So they brought him a young man who told him the story of the stoning. Wait, I thought this was weak, Sam. Yeah, yeah, weak. Yeah, even though it's Hassan according to the... It's Hassan according to... Now, but that's how I destroyed Daniel and Jazz because they used that card. I said, no, no, no. No, was it them or someone else? Anyway, I was with someone said, no, no, no. It's deemed Hassan. But only that Ibn Qayyim said, scholars cited this hadith. Scholars, more than one, mm -hmm. and deduced that here it proves the Torah is not corrupt. Why would they quote a weak hadith? Because notice what he says the scholar said about this hadith. Read that part. All right. It says here, the scholar said, if the Torah was corrupted, he would not have placed it on the pillow and he would not have said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. This group now, of pause scholars. Right there before you see what the scholar said? This hadith proves that Muhammad believed their Torah at that time is uncorrupt. Because if it was corrupt, he wouldn't say, I believe in you. But wait, I thought it's weak. Scholars, I guess they know more than the scholars, right? That's now funny. notice the other argument they give to prove the Torah. And by extension, the gospel can't be corrupted. This group of scholars also said what? They also said that Allah said, and the word of your Lord has been accomplished truly and justly. There is none who can change his words, and he is the hearing and knowing. And the Torah is Allah's word. Do you see what they quote? They quote what I quote, what you quote, chapter 6, verse 150. They use the Islamic dilemma argument. So they quote chapter 6, verse 1. Did you hear it, pagans? A group of scholars quote the same hadith we quote, same Bukhari we quote, same ayah, 6115, saying no one can change Allah's words. And since the Torah is Allah's word, cannot be changed, but that's true of the gospel and Zabur. And it's not about the earthly books, not the one in heaven, then finish it. And the Torah is all his word. This group of scholars also said, 
There are famous traditions also which indicate that the Jews covered up the prophecies in the Torah concerning the prophet, and they did not allow their children and the common people to look up these prophecies. And if anyone looked up these prophecies, the Jews will tell them that they are not concerning Muhammad. These are the arguments which this group of scholars used. Now, Avery, I want you to pay attention of the three groups. The only group that brought evidence, notice three groups. The only group that brought evidence are the group that said the Torah cannot be corrupted. They brought yep. evidence. Yep. The first group that said the Torah is corrupt, no evidence apart from variations, which the Quran yep. has variations. Yep. Now there's a third group. And he says, this is the view of my Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah about the Torah. Read the last part. The third group said the Torah was altered slightly. However, the majority of it still is still intact. But th the changes were minor. And among those who have chosen this view is our scholar Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah. Taymiyyah. In his book, Al Jawab, he says, yes, I'll give you that. The Torah is still substantially intact. There's only a few minor variations. So wow. they went with Ibn Kathir. They ignored Ibn Taymiyyah, who said, yeah, the Torah is substantially preserved. I'll give you that. Some minor changes, but it, it doesn't mean it's completely lost. But then Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Taymiyyah's pupil and friend of Ibn Kathir says, yeah, that's Ibn Kathir's view, but there are two other views. There's a view among scholars say, Torah cannot be corrupted or any of the books, and they give their evidence. Why did they hide that from you? Mm. 